Well, I feel a little bit like I should be wearing an awesome cowboy hat and like doing lots of rodeo jokes. And I kind of meant to do that, but then ended up not really having the energy to get together the necessary performativity and props. So actually, <laughs> uh, it will just be, I, I hope, um, I will do a little bit of a guided tour of Bugzilla as Mozilla uses it, and then invite you guys to be hands-on, um, make accounts if you don't already have them on Bugzilla, and um, we can walk through some things. And I, I want to basically talk about bug triage um, as something incredibly useful and kind of fun, actually, and certainly incredibly educational to do in an open source project. And this is basically the point where I don't have to have a lot of caveats about all different open source projects because I'm just going to talk about Mozilla and mostly Firefox. So <clears throat> let me just get the slideshow fired up. There we go. Um, I'm Liz Henry. And um, I work for Mozilla. They hired me in last December as the bug master. And nobody quite knew what that meant. And I went, I didn't know what it meant, but I was applying at Wikimedia at the same time to be their bug master because I thought it sounded awesome in the job description. And I could see the need for, the need for it, right? If you just look at these enormous bug databases and open source projects like huge wikis that accumulate over years need wiki gardening. Um, bug collections need, um, need some sort of care and love and feeding, right? And um, so that's my job title. Um, some of it comes from, I'm just going to talk a little bit more about the job itself because it's a weird new role, relatively new role in open source projects and in, I think, in software um, development. Um, Luis Villa gave a talk a few years ago called Why Your Project Needs a Bug Master. And that's kind of what people have been going on, saying we get a jillion bugs filed and we don't know what happens to them afterwards. So maybe one person should think about that who's not simultaneously fixing the bugs, developing on new projects, and so on. So uh, the role has been created. And um, yesterday, Andre Klepper from Wikimedia and I both um, gave a talk about what we thought about bug master philosophy and what can be done and where the, the thorny controversies of bug triage and bug tracker design are. Um, so that was a lot of fun. That was yesterday. And I may reprise into some of that some of the time. Um, <coughs> so I wanted to ask who you guys are. I figured it would be a fairly small crowd. And I think we have a long form. So I'd love to know, just for purposes of pitching, of, of like having this talk and this workshop, who you guys are and whether you use bug trackers and what your job is and what your interest is in this. So maybe what brings you here, you know? Um, are you already eyeballs deep in Mozilla um, world or um, is this just because you're interested, et cetera? Okay. You're volunteering, but you're here anyway. <laughs> long stint a couple of years ago at a small company where I was sort of, I don't know, second or final level support, <laughs> uh, which involves a lot of triage and a lot of, uh, you know, either working around things or tossing the core engineering. So I have not uh, contributed to Mozilla, and that's an interest to me. Thanks. Hi. Hi. Um, So a couple years ago, I legitimately went to Grace Hopper when I was here in town. And then the next year, I worked for a real company, and I got them to legitimately send me. Uh -huh. and so I participated in the Open Source Day both times. And a lot of times, too, like I tend to be in group work, where I end up on the fringes, as I tend to do in a lot of things. Um, and I don't actually feel like I am getting the hands-on experience that I want to. And I feel like I'm kind of always satelliting around things happening. Uh -huh. um, That makes sense. Like in a hackathon, people are going faster than 
or communicating and you're a little bit watching what's happening. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, do you want to say? Yeah. I think that is so, I keep going around saying that, and that is actually news to a lot of people. But I, I have also been to many um, tech conference talks where they say, you want to get involved in a project? Step one, fix a bug. And I'm like, no, 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 no. step one is way back somewhere else. <laughs> so yeah, that's kind of exactly why I think that um, looking at the bugs that are there and trying to contribute good information to them is a good path into learning the geography of the project and like how developers are working and what fixing a bug actually means. Yeah. I also, I think it's a very overwhelming piece of advice and people come all the time on IRC and are like, I want to fix a bug and I'm like, yes. Good. And they got to IRC. They got to IRC, I know, right, I know. <laughs> no, and it's like. Hop on IRC and like do your first bug and I'm like, oh Yeah. Yeah, also, or they also wanted to get involved, but really not code yet. Well, I mean, not super good, but code of a PS major. But um, yeah. yeah, I want to learn how to contribute and interact with the um, people, or uh, interact with people, and get you know get that pull request and everything, you know, approved and everything. So I figured out the whole process there. Um, so yeah. Yeah, <laughs> a nonprofit and a corporation that are like, strangely tied together. Yes. Yeah. Cool. Jeff, did you work at Dr. Bot, the, the distributor here? I also built, um, I'm not sure how to manage it this, <laughs> this session, per se, other than session. Well, it's a rodeo, so it's automatically yeah. fun, except <laughs> for the animals. It's like a nice, <laughs> nice rodeo where we are ethical in our treatment of our bugs. <laughs> Awesome. Hi everyone, I'm uh, John Union. I'm not a developer. Um, I currently work in California um, in renewable energy, but I'm getting a second degree in computer science at uh, Oregon State University, and uh, I'm about to start my first quarter there. And I'm just here um, as a sponge, just kind of soak it in. Um, awesome. <laughs> so, um, oh, here's the slide where I explain what happens in this talk, which I kind of already did, 
intro, and now we've had all intros, which I love. Thank you very much, because then I have a sense of who we have all have a sense of who, who we're talking with. Um, I want to do a little walkthrough of Bugzilla um, as Mozilla uses it. Um, uh, show some sort of easy triage project um, you know, information, like here is a project of people triaging this certain thing, and you could join it in X way. And then I kind of want to just go look at some bugs and say, here's the story of me looking at this, you know, let's look at this bug and see what we can tell about it and tell a kind of a narrative about it. That may sound kind of um, hippy-dippy, but um, I find that each bug seems like a little story to me. Um, and um, talking through what you're doing as you're triaging it is what I tried to do on IRC during our triage days. Like, oh, I'm looking at bug X, and this is what I'm thinking about it, and then I have to go look something up here and drop the link. So doing that is what I mean by the story of the bug. Um, and we have an IRC channel um, on irc.mozilla.org, um, um, and the channel is Pound Bug Masters. Um, then if you really want, uh, at the end, we could have like a, oh my god, my Firefox is broken talk because everyone wants to tell me that when I say I do anything with bugs and Mozilla, they're like, my Firefox bug sucks and you're going to help me get it fixed. And so that, that, that can happen during the session or it can happen any time that you happen to see me. I don't mind. And then we can have like a group hug. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, this is exactly what you were talking about, the standard advice, how to contribute, you love this project, step one, fix a bug, you know, submit a patch, <laughs> and like, and then, you know, underwear gnomes, profit, etc. right? Uh, yeah, yeah, right. There's another path, we can love all of our bugs, etc. Um, bug triage is interesting, many faceted, it helps you learn the landscape of the project, and by the landscape, I mean all the sort of apparatus, like a bug tracker and IRC channels and wiki pages and how people are communicating. There's usually a mailing list. And so, um, and a jillion of them spring up. So it's actually amazingly complicated. And I think of that as people, you know, experience it as off-putting sometimes, but I see it as just sort of like a very information-rich and dense environment. And any place you go into it is probably going to be interesting. Um, you can do um, one thing, were you saying this about like the, you can do useful things in small pieces. And I find this particularly great. I think that way in general in any creative endeavor um, or work. I like want to write tiny encyclopedia entries or you know fix a thing incrementally. So rather than taking a huge project and saying I'm going to create a new feature and do something super architecturally ambitious, you can say here is a small thing and I can contribute towards it and then I'll watch it gradually and whenever I, you have time you can contribute. So I like bug triage because I can never predict my level of energy um, and ability to concentrate and this is like a thing that is a little bit more handleable than um, sinking into the code for five hours or whatever. It's really helpful for developers. It can be really helpful. It can also be, when done wrong, can be annoying to some developers and their style. But I think that overall, it's super helpful and people are having a lot of good feedback about it. Um, again, it's like a, a, a good pathway into um, other kinds of contribution, like coding, writing new features, you know, um, doing QA, doing testing, um, writing automated tools, learning to use like different APIs. It can be like a very interesting, um, path in. Bugzilla also, I will switch to a live screen where we look at Bugzilla. This is just my talky slides. And then we'll, we'll, we'll jump into doing stuff. Bugzilla is very texty and has a ton of information and just is like a wall of like alpha barf, like blah, over the screen. And, and you have to kind of like look at all that information and not, not recoil in horror and look for the bits that right then are important to you. And sometimes that takes a while. So the first step in bug triage is read and understand the bug. And it's amazing how people sometimes approach um, fixing a problem without having actually understood the problem. And that takes a little bit of like thinking. Um, so what I'd like for us to do is if you guys have computers and want to, you could actually go to bugzilla.mozilla.org and sign up for an account. And I'm gonna switch over to Bugzilla See how this looks on the screen. That's not bad. Uh, let's get our search thing away. Um, so 
once you sign in, the sign in process itself is perhaps a little bit like over TMI. <laughs> um, if you're looking at it, I could sign out and look at it, but I, we'll just say it's a sign up process. It's not a one click sign up process. And one of the things it's trying to do is to lead you gently if you're there to report a support problem. Like if you want help because your Firefox crashed, this may not be actually where you want to be. Maybe, but you might first be want to be gently like encouraged to go check the support forums or do other things. Or um, so the sign up process itself is a little bit of a barrier, not intentionally by design to push people away, but to 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 lead them other places. So once you sign up, you get this screen, and a lot of it I'm going to change. Um, so part of what I think my role as bug master is, is to say, these are the things about this bug tracker that are not working for the users. And like user preferences, I don't feel like needs to be on the main page. Instead, we'll have a profile that tells you some information about your Bugzilla activity. Um, working on it, probably about to launch. Um, various other features that you might notice are, um, once you signed up, you will have you will not have all these things in the footer. You'll have something that says my bugs, like this. And what I'm going to do is just make my cursor huge. Hang on a second. Um, accessibility. Display cursor size. Let's just make the cursor kind of big. That's good. I think that's good for accessibility. It's so useful in contexts that aren't really about disability. Um, so. <coughs> Over here, in this footer, there are things that are like little links to saved searches. And one of the things I want to do to make Bugzilla more newbie friendly is to put a few useful saved searches in this bar. And the one, because my bugs doesn't link to anything if you've just signed up. You don't have any bugs yet. You haven't reported any bugs, and no bugs are assigned to you. So it's information, it's informationless. Zero, Zero bugs found, Zero bugs found, yeah. Found. Yeah, that has a whole history. Um, and there, my first question encountering this is, I just want to look at a bug. Like, I want to look at a list of bugs, or I want to look at a bug, and there's nothing that leads me in. So I'm not going to keep complaining about that, because I'm going to fix that soon. Let's look at bugs filed today. That's the one I'm going to put in every new, new user sign up. Um, so bugs filed today. There's a little animation with the original Mozilla dinosaur head. And in the last 24 hours, um, there are 443 bugs that have been filed. Um, things to kind of like some interesting things about this. One is the URL is, you know, Perltastic. Um, it's just this giant, it's just got a ton of parameters and you can kind of see it and then what those parameters are. And then over here, it tends to tell you some of the other parameters. I'm searching for bugs that have been changed in the last 24 hours. Um, creation date, last 24 hours. Not a lot of other, I might have something else in there, like the search might say, I only want to see, I don't know, it's got many kinds of bugs. I think this is actually all the bugs in all the categories, so it really is what it says. It's bugs filed in the last 24 hours. You can sort these columns, which is amazingly useful. And there is another preference to add more columns to that list. So you can add more sortable columns somewhere down here in the preferences. Um, you can do that. Oh, Charitas, change columns. Yeah. Um, so this is basically the bug list view. And everything that you'll see in Bugzilla that's a list will look basically like this. So I can sort an ID. Um, that's the bug ID that just actually tells you how many bugs are in the database. You see there's almost 900,000 bugs in, in this database. And about, um, I think, 140K of them are open bugs. Um, um, that is actually an order of magnitude greater than the amount of bugs in the other large um, open source software projects that I have data about. I, there's probably other comparable ones. Um, but I'm, I, you know, I know about Wikimedia and GNOME, and, and um, they're big and super active, but Mozilla is activer. So <laughs> um, there's a lot there. You can reverse the sort, and you can look and sort the oldest ones first. So 
The status is another super interesting thing to sort on. The unconfirmed ones, we'll show it first. Um, so these are bugs filed by new Bugzilla users who don't have like particular like um, permissions in the system. So it alerts people that the user who reported this may or may not like be savvy enough to know if this is really a bug. So a big part of what early bug triage and the sort of bug mastering thing that I'm trying to get people to do and that lots of people to do is confirming unconfirmed bugs. So you're either confirming, yes, it's a good bug. It exists. I can replicate it. Here's some steps to reproduce it. Um, or you may close the bug or, um, and say, this is actually a support issue. Um, there's not enough information here to even know what you're talking about. <laughs> and, um, uh, you may ask the reporter for more information. So then it becomes a new bug. New means, oh, you're actually a valid bug. Um, resolved can mean various things. And fixed means something has been deployed, like code has been changed, something has been fixed and verified. Um, can, uh, actually, the status is verified. The uh, resolution of the bug is fixed, if it gets fixed. But it could be resolved. Um, as works for me. So it means the bug gets closed and nobody's going to actually fix it. Or won't fix is not fixing it and, and works for me is um, nobody was able to actually replicate the bug. So that just gives a little bit of an overview of list bug. Are people at all doing this or should I just keep walking through? Is this? If I look at my computer, I'll stop listening to you. Oh, there's that problem. Um, are you still waiting on getting the email? It might go to spam. It might look funny. Mm -hmm. well, it yeah. So one of the things about Bugzilla to think about is that it sends sends mail. It sends a lot of mail, and when you make an account um, and start to touch bugs, they will start sending you mail, and then. There are preferences you can set which will, you, where you can control under what circumstances it sends you mail. Like someone else makes a comment, you get mail, et cetera. And that's all extremely fine grained to the point where it's hard to figure out what it even means. But one thing I definitely recommend if you want to do this is that you kind of have to set up your own infrastructure of work. And part of that is filtering the bug mail into some special bug mail folder um, so that it doesn't flood you with information. Um, when the bug was last changed can be interesting, less so for the last 24 hours, but if you're looking at a list of extremely, like, um, I, I did some interesting things yesterday that we could try of just looking for really old bugs and then trying to figure out whether to close them or not. Um, then sorting by the date last change can show you, my God, nobody's commented or changed this bug since 2004. What's up with that? Um, philosophies are very different over whether um, whether you should even mess with that old of a bug. Do you want to comment on it? Do you want to close it? Or should you just leave it alone? And um, there's plenty of controversy about that. So. That shows you a list view. Let's just look at a bug. Um, this one looks juicy. OK, let's look at this one. It's the top one. When I use the Firefox 21 update, I cannot open the program. Oh, no. So it's unconfirmed. This is the show bug, like an individual bug page. And as you see, it's big. Um, there's lots of information. There's the comments. Sometimes a bug will you know, get a lot of comments really quickly. The status of the bug is unconfirmed. You can see if you have a Bugzilla account who is new to Bugzilla, like, um, and that is something that has been useful to give people answering the person or commenting on their bug a little context. Um, not to be elitist, but to remind people to be welcoming and not just say, duplicate bug, you know, closed. But to say, you know, thanks for your report, um, you know, et cetera. Maybe you have to not be new to Bugzilla to see who <laughs> is new to Bugzilla. Um, I don't remember. Um, 
being, I may actually also make that a link because people forget what new to Bugzilla means, and I think it means you have less than 25 things that you've done. Like if you've commented 25 times or made some edits, um, uh, changed the, some flags or added some tags to a bug, then you no longer will show as new to Bugzilla after a little while. Yes, I'm so glad you said that. I have using an add-on called, you're going to see all my add-ons. Oh, no. What? I don't, I almost did. It's too bad I don't have the cloud to butt that was mentioned yesterday. <laughs> my brother-in-law twittered back to me when I said that yesterday, and my brother-in-law went, what do you mean, replace all instances of in my butt with in my butt? And I was like, okay, I get it. You, you already have it installed. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> he probably actually does. So, <laughs> um, so Bugzilla JS is the secret awesome um, thing that gives little avatars and extra little drop-down menus. So it gives nice little tweaks. You can change what? That's what I'm saying. You're, you're, you get that drop down because you're like an admin, don't you? Which drop down? The Firefox, you can prop, prop, prop. Yes. Um, that, um, do you not have that? No. I think that's because you want to have, uh, what does it show for you? It just shows product and on triage, but not. So that's because to do this triaging job, you need to have the permission set that you can confirm bugs. And you don't, by default, have it set. And that's always been a sort of contentious point. And there was one person who kind of controlled who could do it. And now, I mean, lots of people can control it. But there was a whole process. But all I did was edit a wiki page to say, if you want faster than, um, if you want to get this permission faster than two weeks from now, um, you can, because it says you may have to wait two weeks to get the permission. So you would be not able to do this workshop. Um, if you want it, then you can email me. So I edited the wiki page, and now people just email me to get the permission. And I may change things so that people have certain permission. Like, I may need to make a new Bugzilla role. Anyway. So tell me your email, and I will give you... Um, you don't care? Okay. Well, that's one of the... Um, Things for a workshop like this, it probably would be more ideal to get people's emails beforehand and get them to sign up beforehand and then um, give them all the right permissions. But um, I figured that this is basically my trial run. You guys are actually my trial run of walking through someone through doing this. So, so. what was that add-on again? I was looking this is called Bugzilla JS. Um, so Bugzilla.js, and you also need to have can confirm as a, um, as a permission to be able to change some of these bug statuses. And the advice for new triagers right now is um, you can't do the, some of the things that you would want to do, but comment in the comments and um, CC someone who can give you that permission so they see that you're trying to do a thing and that you're doing it reasonably correctly. Um, and then they will give you the permissions. Um, but I think that that information should be in the sign up when you sign up. Yeah. <laughs> like, if you intend to contribute to this database beyond filing one bug, then here's the information you may need to do some work. So that is something I want to improve. Um, so here we see, I'm just going to like give a little more of a tour of the anatomy of the bug. Um, it's unconfirmed because it's filed by this person who is pretty much you know, new to Bugzilla. Um, the need info flag there is that someone here in the comments, Jim Newman is the person, the bug reporter, and we see a user agent string here automatically stuck in. We also see the build ID um, in case we want to know exactly what version this person is using. Um, and they're using the beta or release version, like the most recent released software. So they're using Firefox 20 and the bugs for 21. Mm -hmm. They're using Firefox 20. And
And did it say 21? Yeah. Well, because they're trying to update to 21. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I don't think that's a problem because, I mean, maybe, but there's no way to know what they're trying to do for the version. I mean, yeah. So this person, um, the new Bugzilla reporter, new, new bug reporters get a little form that's like guided bug entry that asks them these questions. So what are the steps to reproduce this bug? They click the update Firefox button, try to do it. Afterwards, unable to start the program, my solution was to reinstall the program over the top. I do not have the 21 update. So something's wrong. I don't know if it means that it crashed. So, oh look, it's Andre from Wikimedia. He's triaging. He's a... <laughs> Um, that's funny. And uh, he's at this conference and he's triaging my bugs. Why? <laughs> he's, cause he's just nice. He's like, I should go work on Wikimedia bugs just to be nice back. Um, so if you look and see if he was supposed to be uh, talking in a session. <laughs> maybe, yeah, it was probably during our session. <laughs> um, so he's suggesting a support link. He's kind of like, we don't have enough information to be able to replicate this. We don't know what's happening. It doesn't sound like it crashed. Like if you said Firefox actually crashed, then we could probably find a crash signature. We could encourage the person to give us, to go to about colon crash and give us a crash signature. So this is a bug where it's a little bit vague. They're having a problem. I would probably tell them to start Firefox in safe mode, like turn off all the, the safe mode, actually the word for it, I can't even remember now. I'm a little tired. Um, but if they turn off all of their add-ons and then start Firefox and then run the update, because they may have some weird plugin or some malware. You know, that's one of the first things I would do. So this is kind of more of a support question until I'm convinced it's actually a bug. Um, and we see also there's somebody CC'd on the bug. That's the, actually the reporter. You can add yourself to the CC list if you want to see bug mail on it. There's a complicated structure of flags and project flags and whether it's a blocker. If it was a crash, I would make sure that crash was in the title and that would turn the title red. There's all sorts of like little things you can do that add information. I would probably add a, a keyword for, um, for crash. Um, and that would signify, that would kind of escalate the bug. Like if something is making Firefox crash and it's a bug, then lots of people will go triage it because lots of people think that triaging crash bugs is exciting. Um, mm -hmm. It's exciting and super complicated and involves looking at crash stats website and um, looking at what build, what commit actually broke. Um, so doing regression testing um, that is fun. It's a little suite of Python tools called Mose Regression. And you run Mose Regression and it opens up, a, 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 you bisect sort of like what version of Firefox, uh, what build exactly, um, where, where the bug happened. Like when did, was it last working and when did it break? And you try to narrow it down as much as possible. So um, that helps the developers a fair amount. But I wouldn't do that on every bug because not every bug is gonna be valid or even need that level of work. So I just want to pause because I do feel like I'm just talking a lot and kind of staring at the screen and showing you stuff. Is this interesting? Um, is there something that might be more useful? Um, I may shift now to talking about actual triaging projects and the information that um, comes from that. But I wanted this little kind of preliminary tour to sink in a bit. Um, does anyone have thoughts? Do you want to maybe talk about like UI weirdness or the use of the text and the like, mm -hmm. like UI weirdnesses and non obvious things like around triage? Mm. Around triage? <sighs> non obvious things around triage. Well, installing that add on is helpful, knowing that the headers are clickable. Um, searches are certainly a super weird um, <laughs> aspect. Like, so that's something that we can get into that. So searching, the advanced search is like this massive um, complicated thing that once you learn to wield it is awesome. 
There's also like ways to quick search, um, and those can be really useful and good. But often I like to do things in the advanced search because then I know exactly what. Um, I don't have to actually remember um, the quick search terminology. So I think. Um, so you can make very, very specific searches. Actually, I'll just do a fun one. I did this, I was, I was doing this one just to show like how many old bugs can sometimes be. Um, so let's look at core bugs. That's not a UI thing, that's like a categorization taxonomy thing. Um, each, um, all the bugs have a product um, assigned, so that's just like a top category and that might be like Firefox OS, or Firefox for Android, or desktop Firefox, um, or Thunderbird, for example. Um, and then within that, there'll be a lot of different subcategories for components. So if you, you know, have a problem in bookmarks, you pretty much obvious, oh, it goes in Firefox bookmarks. Not too hard. But a lot of them are uh, harder to tell where the bug should logically go, even if you're quite experienced. So that is one of the interesting things about triaging these Firefox bugs. The um, things that are, the code that's shared between Firefox and other Mozilla projects is um, usually in this other product called Core. So this is the Core Mozilla things. And like disability access is there. All the DOM bugs, all the layout bugs are here. Graphics, a lot of graphics. Um, see all these different layout categories are fairly confusing. So I was actually picking on core layout as one that gets quite a lot of bugs and uh, more than can really be handled. So if we just look at only the open bugs, like unconfirmed new, we can look at assigned and reopened too, that'll be. These guys are all open bugs and resolved, verified, and closed would be not open bugs. And I don't care what resolution they are, so I'm going to leave that there. I don't care about the comments, URLs. That's kind of interesting. I've never actually searched on URL. Like you could search on all bugs reported against a certain website and see what happened. Um, keywords um, are um, particular, are kind of controlled. Like it's a drop, it's it's a drop down. It's a controlled list. Like controlled by admins. Um, and whiteboard is like the free tagging. So you can just type whatever, blah, blah. I'm not going to put that. Um, <laughs> um, you can search against versions. And with Firefox rapid releasing every six weeks, the versions are now, the version numbers um, are getting kind of high. Um, severity of the bug. Priorities are usually assigned within a team. So once the bug has kind of been triaged into somewhere, a team will internally run their own triage, which is also good to get involved in. But um, most of what I'm really interested in right now is the early incoming bug triage. You can search to see all the bugs that somebody has commented on, et cetera. We can see ones that have changed. I'm searching for all the core bug, core layout bugs ever that are open. Let's see what happens. Search. What happens is this dinosaur eats a bug a lot. Okay, this result was limited to 500 bugs. I'm going to look at all the search results for this query. It's actually much snappier than it used to be, but you know, if you're doing an enormous SQL query for over 500 bugs. We're, we're looking at 20, we're looking at a lot of bugs. So over 2,000 <laughs> bugs. If we sort them by ID, then we think a little bit more, sorry. This is like such a rude example, but um, I want to show like an intimidating example first and then a more handleable example. Like I would almost never start triaging by looking at this search because there's too many bugs and it would be disheartening to go, oh, it went down from 2351 to 23, 49, because I did some work. You know, um, the metrics of your, you know, how, the measuring how much work you've done shouldn't really be like by the way that number changes, but sometimes it feels that way. Um, but basically, I wouldn't want to start with such a huge list. So that's the most recent one, pretty recent. 
If I sort it the other way, is it going to think again? No, good. Um, so, yes, that was when the bugs were still in the five digits. If we look over here by the date last changed, we could look by the date last opened. That's probably going to match what the, the bug ID number is fairly well. Yeah, we could look at when, oh, but look, that 1999 bug was just changed a couple of years ago. This one from 1999 was changed in January. I bet it will be a little bit bogus, and I wonder why that bug is even Maybe still there. Maybe contentious? <laughs> um, yes. So this is also, this is an interesting, I think, category, even though huge when you look at it with this kind of search. Interesting for people who come from a web dev background. So that's an idea I want to develop out, is to encourage web developers to take a look at this category. Let's sort by last changed and see what the oldest, like the bug that's been untouched for the longest. 2004, script call to change document background color. Immediately preceding an alert event does not change the entire background. God, alert the press. So, um, <laughs> I, <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> this was once important to someone. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I've, this is being recorded, okay. Yeah. So, <laughs> it, 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 is, it is good. I think perfectionism is a fine trait in a QA tester mentality. Like, you want to pick all the things. You want to report these bugs. I'm not sure why, you know, I'm, I'm, I feel moved. I feel moved to click on that, actually. <laughs> um, so, some of these content, of the, some content of the page cannot be seen when moving horizontal scroll bar. You know, who knows if this is still true? This happened on some version of Linux in 2004. Is it still happening? Is it reproducible? I kind of am of the mind like, my god, this is probably, if it's not reproducible and the person who reported it isn't still experiencing the problem, maybe it could be closed. But then it would send a lot of developers bug mail. <laughs> and There's no way to tell it to send certain, mm. certain no, because people choose for themselves whether they want to see the bug mail on it. Unless I were to do something like do some kind of secret mass closing of bugs, which would be terrible. That would be non-ethical. It is a rip off the bandage. Rip off. I think I, I may soon start experimenting with it. Um, in small areas, like not a thousand close bugs, but a like I'm going to close a hundred bugs, and or I'm going to do a soft close with a warning, like I will need info, the bug reporter or something, or the module owner. Yeah. Mm. But I would probably want to do that with the with a discussion with somebody who works on that aspect of like if it's about core layout bugs, I would want to go talk to that team. If it's about Accessibility bugs, I would definitely want to like talk to the people working on it. I would go to their IRC channel or join their mailing list or just email them and um, and discuss what would they would find useful. So I'm serving the developers as well as I'm serving like other bug reporters. Reasons to do some sort of like gardening or culling. <laughs> You're not actually deleting anything. The bug is still there. It's still searchable. It's still even indexed in search engines. So the information is still discoverable if someone else has the same problem or someone feels like they really, really, that's their passion and they want to fix that bug, they can still do that. Um, but people coming in and reporting a similar bug may be confused because there may be lots of similar duplicate type things. So there are arguments in, for and against that. Let me move on a little bit. Um, but I hope that was interesting. Here are some of the actual projects that I encourage people to start with, with triage. Um, and what I'm doing is trying to have bug days that focus on one of these areas. Like, oh, today, Tuesday, we are going to focus on um, um, good first and mentored bugs. So all the bugs marked as good first bugs that we're encouraging new contributors to come and fix. Let's triage just those and see what it is that we're telling people to come fix. Are they even bugs anymore? Are they from 2003? 
If so, we might want to think about not tagging them good first bugs. So that's been a fun one, mentored bugs team. So while running the event that happens sort of on a day where I commit to being available on IRC all day long and try to get other people to come in and join um, in, um, I will also make a wiki page for the event um, and maybe an etherpad if, if, if people want an etherpad. However, etherpad has accessibility problems for blind and screen reader users. So um, I try to keep it to the wiki actually, even though otherwise etherpad is kind of awesome. Um, so I have like an event and also this project or team page where um, you can contribute and do it anytime. Like you can come in and kind of learn what the pathway is to, to do this. Um, mentored bugs go into a little site that, where you can pick a nice bug and talk to your mentor. Good first bugs um, feed into um, OpenHatch, which is a, a system that shows good first bugs from all sorts of open source projects. It's pretty neat. But what I found when I looked at the bugs that we actually were sending, uh, were marking as good first bugs, was that somebody once thought it was a good idea to mark it good first bug, and then nothing happened for six years. So triaging this seemed really worthwhile and good for new contributions. And I, I, th I think it will, will actually be so, and I'm going to run this event repeatedly every like month or so. Um, <clears throat> and hope to get kind of a, a steady team going that who, from the um, coding contribution stewards team at Mozilla. Um, some of the questions asked are, is this bug old and stale? That's what I keep making fun of because I keep finding them and I, 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 you need a sense of humor. You know, should I be closed? Should I need info? I, I like mark a little flag. Um, hey, you know, bug reporter, more information from you. Or maybe the mentor mark, who marked themselves as a mentor on the bug. Hey, mentor, is this something you still want to mentor? Do you think it's still a good bug? Or maybe the person who's taken the bug, like someone six years ago said, I'll fix this bug, assigned themselves to the bug, thus doing what people call cookie licking. Do you know this term, cookie licking? Oh, yeah. I love this term. Somebody said it, and I thought, that's great, cookie licking. And I'm guilty of it sometimes. I like say I'm going to fix a bug, and I get all excited, and I fork a project or whatever, and then I don't actually do the thing. But somebody thinks I'm doing the thing, so they don't sign up to fix the bug. So, I like to now um, encourage people to look through the list of, of, of good first bugs, see if they've been assigned, someone has taken them, you know, you assign yourself basically to a bug, um, and see if it's been like a month or two months or several years, and then ask that person, do you still want to work on it in a nice way that doesn't make them feel guilty, hopefully. But, you know, like sometimes people go, my God, I meant to do that, and I totally forgot, and I'm going to do it. And, and so I'm not going to unassign them. They can unassign themselves can make the decision. Is the bug current assigned, but the assignee hasn't touched it? Yeah. Then need info nicely. I just said that. Then triage through the bugs that have the white bug board flag. Good first bug, but are not mentored. Should they be mentored? So that's, that's good. Let's just look at that, since it has a nice handy link. Uh, I kind of experience this as like, I don't have a lot of structure in what I have to be doing or what I'm required to be doing. And, Nothing is super crucial except for finding crash bugs um, or things that are really critical, you know, things that should block the next release. And if you've come across that, that's great. But other than that, I, I can kind of play around in all this data and look at the data different ways and then think, what would be useful? What could I do here? You know, what would move along some of these issues? So here's our 267 good first bugs. Um, move that over a little bit. Yeah. So just in order, in fact, to look at the good first bugs, I am showing the whiteboard column, which won't show in otherwise. Like I use the change columns uh, preference to add it in. And so this is nice. People are tagging with language, um, the name of the mentor. Sometimes there's like a date. And that was quite interesting. I'm kind of in the process of, I also went through all these bugs with the people who joined me for the triage and gathered all the names of the people who had signed up to do a good first bug and invited them to the Mozilla Summit. So that was, that was you know, I didn't invite them to the Mozilla Summit. I added them to the list of potential invitees and then like a giant committee decided who to invite to the, you know, 2,000 person Mozilla Summit. So um, this was, this was pretty interesting. If we look at when they were last changed, some of these 
probably still needs some triage. Oh, but I'm looking at bugs that are already resolved. So it's resolved, maybe I could go take the tag off it just so it won't bug me when I come up in these searches. Or I could change the search. Um, like my link in that thing, I should probably change the search to um, exclude bugs that are closed. That would be clever. You could do it both ways. You could also go clean up the craft. Um, then I'm, I mentioned triaging strategies, like different ways. Oh, sort it by component. Let's go back to that list. Component. Here. I could look at product. There are lots of good first bugs listed for calendar, which is, I think, I guess this is the calendar. I don't, I don't actually use it, but I'm a little curious to try it. It was once called Lightning, I think, and it's the calendar that is integrated with Thunderbird. So lots of good first bugs there, but I think that might be uh, lots of core bugs, lots of Firefox bugs. Just kind of scrolling through SeaMonkey. SeaMonkey is sort of the integrated suite of tools. Lots of people still use it, but it's not maybe the best maintained. It's kind of legacy testing. Lots of testing bugs. That's actually the team I'm um, in. Yeah, where are the Thunderbird bugs? I think there are actually lots of Thunderbird bugs, but someone hasn't marked them as good first bugs. There might be plenty of good first bugs in there, but it takes someone to go look through all the Thunderbird bugs and decide whether they seem to be good first bugs. So, And also, interesting tidbit here is as I dug around in this and talked to people, I found that everyone in different teams had different ideas of what was a good first bug and what that actually meant and, and what a mentored bug should be. So lots of new contributors, potential contributors, were being told to... Um, look at mentored bugs as their first project, but actually many people were thinking of mentored bugs as much more complicated than good first bugs. But it, the, so the terminology use and how people were tagging it and then what was getting built on top of those definitions turned out to be super ambiguous and is still in flux. So that was an interesting result of bug triage. Uh, just case study. Um, and then I talk a little bit about mentor and what that means. Should bugs have both good first bug and mentor? And maybe not, maybe so. I think what actually is going to happen here is that from these discussions that have resulted, um, Bugzilla itself will get some changes where um, um, there will be a, a mentor field. So you can sign yourself up to mentor a bug, even if it's not a good first bug, and then there'll be sort of a assess difficulty level or complexity level of the bug fix. And what I think of as a good first bug is a sort of a, almost a, like maybe a typo bug, where there's just a little change, a wording change, a small style change, but basically a change that only you have to do in one file, right? and then you can submit your patch. It's one file. You're not tracing through a lot of different areas um, that interrelate. And I think a mentored bug would be something more ambitious than that. And there might be good first bugs that are slightly more complex and aren't like typo level bugs, um, but they wouldn't necessarily involve um, opening a lot of different files. So. I tried also running an accessibility um, triage. That was pretty interesting. I'm not sure how successful it actually was, but it was a, a, you know, kind of a learning experience. We um, did a lot of talking to the accessibility team <laughs> and got a lot of interest from screen reader users in coming and doing testing and um, looking at bugs and trying to explain how to reproduce the bug and people have an interest in doing that, and um, I think it can work out in the future um, if we try doing this bug day again. But it was a little bit more um, complicated. Here's my attempt to write up how to do core layout. <laughs> it's fairly complicated, but like I said, good for web developers. Another project kind of in progress is for nightly builds. So 
Do you, and does anybody use the Nightly or Aurora Firefox builds? Oh. I can move it over, hang on. Oh. So, every night, oh, except not, what? Okay. <laughs> Really? That's probably just a wiki editing error. Oh wait, this looks more promising. Okay. So this is basically the latest bleeding edge Firefox. You can download it, you can run it, and it's gonna be more buggy because it's like today's code changes in Firefox. So if you want to find bugs just by running nightly and you're not afraid of your browser crashing, um, it's good to use this and you might actually uncover a new bug or um, submit a crash report and that becomes really useful data for fixing Firefox. And I think that triaging the bugs that get reported from that build um, is also interesting. So you learn in that, you learn to, to do builds, you tend to learn regression testing. Um, so you get to run the, the little program that helps you narrow down um, at what commit the, 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 the crash started happening. Um, here, once again, let me just make my whole window a bit narrower. Hang on a second. Um, Mercurial, but some projects are using um, GitHub. So, depending. So, what? Party time. Party time, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, here's the, the bugs on the, it's also really fun to use the nightly build because you get to see like a preview of new features and things like that. And basically, you're testing them. Um, there are also organized test days. But I haven't run a nightly triage day yet, but I think that that will be really interesting. And again, I don't think that an event is really as effective as outlining the scope of a role and saying, ah, I'm gonna just take that on as a doable thing. Like one of my hobbies will be occasionally triaging Firefox nightly bugs. And that's um, valid. I don't feel like encouraging people to do that would be particularly exploitative because again, you know, you're learning all of the things that will um, that go into the development. So you're asking about the source control, about the, was that you asking? Yeah, I'm just curious about the Firefox, what's the Firefox training that you're doing? Yeah. Like what do you have to contribute things in to? Um, so this is the Mozilla Central like commits and you can see a bunch of activity there. Um, with people doing their commits and then um, basically there's, I'm not gonna be a great explainer of this because I've only actually submitted a couple of patches. So, <laughs> um, but it's, it's kind of an example of like the level of weird interesting detail you start to get into, right? So if you're narrowing down, you're looking around in the code, you can search um, with, um, are. You can search Mozilla Central Code for something like, I, I can't think of a great example right now to search for, but um, if you had some kind of error message or you knew something was particularly wrong, or you were just searching for like the title of a file or something like that, you could do that. Um, so I just searched on browser.css and found 28 matching lines and 18 files, so that's useful. You can just basically search the whole active code base and find where um, browser.css is referenced and then that will lead you around. You can see where, what I've been doing. <laughs> I, I went through a little tutorial in which I changed the code to um, in browser.xul to turn my, my tabs green. That was a thrill. So that was just my little exercise into like, oh, what can I do in the code base? So I haven't actually submitted a bunch. Um, 
to Firefox, I have been looking more at the Bugzilla code base, which is in Perl. So. Um, this other thing I was showing you is the push log. So this shows you that the, the main active code repo is Mozilla Central, and here is a particular commit, and then these are the tests that it underwent, and the green ones mean that it passed the test. So there's a ton of information here, and I don't actually know how to interpret a lot of it, but it's pretty neat. <laughs> Hopefully that gives you at least a glimpse into the strange world of development. Um, I do know that through, through going through the process that, that once you fix something and, you know, um, I highly recommend going through some of the tutorials on a Mozilla Developer Network that basically say how to submit a patch um, or how to contribute for the first time. I don't remember the exact page name, but I could throw it up on Twitter later or sit here searching. Um, but um, it does walk you through some of these steps of um, poking around in the code, um, downloading the, the source code, you know, looking around at it, changing some things, um, doing a build, and then you know, changing stuff and doing it, building it again, um, and generating a patch. Then you attach your patch to the bug um, and flag when you create that attachment, you take off some ticky boxes that say, please review this, you know, review requested, and then it actually helps then if you find out who you might want to alert that that happened. Like they may notice it or they may not. So it usually helps. You have to like dig around in the Mozilla wiki pages. Um, this is wiki.mozilla.org. Um, and I don't really know how to make this not arcane knowledge that you have to figure out by flailing and doing lots of searches. Um, but the, this page, intuitively titled Modules All, <laughs> um, <laughs> shows you who, uh, who the teams are that work on particular areas. So if you wanted to know, for example, oh, who works on core um, accessibility, they're right there alphabetically at the top. It's kind of interesting. So that is titled a module. Sometimes the module, as defined here, doesn't exactly match up with the Bugzilla product so, or component. And so um, I have worked on clarifying that in Bugzilla. Actually, I can just show you that for a second. So in an individual bug, um, You can click that little show info thing, and it explains what the product is with some sort of definition, and then has a, a link to something that explains it further. Um, developer tools, that one doesn't have a link. It will someday. I will go in and add a little link to the wiki. Um, but given that you kind of know what you're looking for, you can find out who to talk with, so you can see Alexander Surkov, and this is like sort of the team. The peers are people that I think they have commit access or something. Maybe there's way more people with commit access, but they're people who have shared responsibility for this area of the code. And they're all on an IRC channel, usually listed. Uh, not listed here, but um, there is an accessibility IRC channel where they all hang out and you can just go talk to them. And they also have a mailing list. So. Oh, and they saved the Bugzilla component, which is also very nice. So this is part of like the stuff you have to sort of start learning in order to triage a particular area properly. Because there's so much of it, that's why I want to focus on building triage teams that focus in a particular area. Like I work on Nightly, or I do layout bugs, you know, and then there will be people who can discuss among themselves um, how to do that. There already are existing groups of people informally who triage crash bugs, and they kind of all know who each other are, and they have lots of respect within the project, and the developers are like, yay, these people know a lot about crash bugs. And that's what I'm kind of going for here, is that because this is such a huge active project, it wouldn't work to try to know everything, as I know because I've tried to learn everything in the last six months since starting this job. 
<laughs> um, it's a process, you know, it's an ongoing process to learn everything, and um, I will enjoy learning everything, but um, I have to start little by little, and uh, that's where we get these project pages. So these are like the things I have learned so far. Find these, mm -hmm. find who uh, would, would review your bug and let them know. Yes. Is it preferred to let them know on IRC or uh, on the bug itself, you know, or? That is fairly unclear. Okay. Um, sometimes <laughs> particular teams are monitoring. They're watching. Like, they have signed up to component watch or whatever. So whenever something ends up in um, core ex disability access APIs, um, uh, something happens in that category, a bunch of people get bug mail because they've signed up to watch that component and everything that happens in it. It's actually super useful to set up different email filters and then just watch all that stuff roll in and you're aware. You just like have your finger on the pulse of whatever is happening in the area that you're interested in. So if you had a particular interest in like, oh, I know some Python and I'm interested in automated testing and you know, just for example, <laughs> um, then you could watch that component and you would, and you could triage its bugs and you would, over the course of time, be talking to those developers who work in that area and probably end up fixing bugs in that area. So, um, that didn't quite answer your question. I've actually forgotten your question. It was just the preferred method. Oh, the preferred so method, sorry. But it was fairly unclear. So it, is, it is somewhat unclear. It's something I'd like to make I more clear. Yes. So, I mean, I, 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 I'm not sure if this will be a good idea or an idea people embrace, but I was thinking of changing this module owners page, so, or proposing doing this, or trying it on some one group, and then everyone will go, oh, it's not bad for them, we'll try it too. Adding in a like point of contact for triage, or maybe a link to how do we want our bugs triaged? Um, you know, what, what do you do if you have a question? Who do you talk to? Or do you just talk to us in IRC? I think IRC is usually the preferred method, like just asking in the channel directly without a lot of um, explanation is good. What I mean is um, without a lot of disclaimers. Um, so standard IRC interaction advice is come into the channel and just say hello and ask your question. And don't go, I have a question and I'm, because mm -hmm. by that time the person is already bored and has gone somewhere else. Like They start to read the line and just it's like doesn't contain the information. <laughs> Other than like human introductory behavior, <laughs> so <laughs> I wish it wasn't such a thing too. I don't mind having a little small talk introduction, but basically that happens a lot in the introduction channel. So there, here is the IRC. I tried to reduce the enormous amount of IRC channels I'm in. The little red ones are where someone has said the word triage or. Bugzilla, and then I like pop in and go, I see you're talking about Bugzilla, and I'm like, Clippy, you know? I'm like, <laughs> I'm like <laughs> it's like you Buggy like comes in. Did you? Yes, would you like help triaging a <laughs> If your team is having a triage session, perhaps I could sit in on it and learn how you do it from your point of view. So, yeah. Um, often it is people complaining about, you know, if it's somebody going, somebody triaged my bug all wrong and my day is ruined, then I say, oh, you know, like, it looks like you guys <laughs> Then I, I, I attempt to, 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 to facilitate happy resolution and education for everyone. <laughs> Which is another way of saying what you just said. That's the constructive way. That's the constructive way, maybe. So my point originally was to say irc.mozilla.org. People are actually very friendly. I don't mean to be cautionary about the, oh, just ask the question, don't ask if you can ask the question. But people do sometimes have that attitude. Like, um, I would say the Bugmaster channel is chattier. It's nice. Lots of us are very nice in there. Um, the introduction channel is sort of like introduction developer -y channel. Um, oh, there it is, introduction. It's got a lot of people in it. It's, I think, part of the standard I want to contribute to Mozilla, what should I do? Join the introduction channel and say hello is, is one of the things that they advise. So that's definitely a, a, a chatty say hello channel. Developers is the one where they will get cranky if you like, you know. <laughs> Make them pay attention 
to something they don't need to pay attention to. So, yeah. Um, I tend to run the bug days on the bug master channel, but there are also QA run test days um, where they they do like manual testing and automated testing, and and they run triage days too. So we try to work together on those, and I try to contribute. You know, like I come triage the stuff they're triaging. Um, so yeah. That, I think, is likelier to get your response than a mailing list query or an individual email. Part of the idea there is that because the IRC channel is a public, live situation, you ask your question and other people lurking may see your question and benefit from it. So that's the why it's better than privately messaging. I have found that there are definitely Lots of new people who come in say hello on the channel, and we say welcome, and then they private message me some questions. And I will talk to them that way for a while and then try to move the conversation. Like, let's have this conversation in the open channel. It's really OK that you have questions, because people feel that by asking questions, they're revealing their profound ignorance. And I'm like, nobody actually knows. Like, OK, that's not true. Not a lot of people know what they're doing with bug triage, and it's fine to ask questions about what to do, or if you're looking at a bug and you're not sure what to do, I have to ask people all the time for opinions. Um, so I just want to pause for a second. What is our time element, and what would you all like to focus on? Do you want to discuss things? Do you want me to show particular things? Okay. Let's do some things. I would suggest let's look at those triaged and um, the, the, uh, look at the good first and mentored bugs. Right now, that is kind of my favorite introductory thing. Let's see. Let me just get back to that wherever it was. No, no. This is the moment when we close all the tabs. Yay. <laughs> I have a new mantra, which is open tabs are not a to-do list. So I'm like realizing that I end up at the end of the day with 70 tabs because I think that's my to-do list. And I'm actually going to have a real to-do list where I put what I want to do in that tab and what the URL is and then close the tab. <laughs> it's been working really well. I've been forced to think about these things recently because the scale of all this stuff with Mozilla is much greater than the scale of information flow that I'm used to. And I already absorb a lot of information, and this just like ramped it way up. So, um, OK. So this Bugmasters projects page, a sort of ungraceful plural. Hmm. So projects, and then if we look at that mentored bugs team, which is a slightly hopeful name, uh, um, it has the link to, actually, the little wiki page might be interesting, uh, etherpad page. Ah, I guess that describes what we did at the last one. and. Um, listed some numbers, like how many bugs are in each one. I don't think that's useful for us right now. If you click on the query, good first bugs query, no mentor. Where is this page? This page is in wiki.mozilla.org slash bugmasters slash projects. Um, Or you can go in Bugzilla and do a search and get the same basic result. In that search button link. But you can just click the link and that will be faster. Um, every search or every list view when you're looking at it has a little edit search um, link down at the bottom, which is kind of cool because we've come to the search from a link and we don't necessarily know how it was constructed. And we can click on edit search and then see 
that it's simply looking for good first bugs. Let's limit it to good first bugs. Oh, let's not, actually. Let's keep it all the first good first bugs. We could even look for specifically, just to be easy, where are the good first bugs that were, no, let's, okay, sorry. I'm debating myself out loud. I was just thinking, ah, an easy task would be to remove the good first bug tag from bugs that were closed. But I'm not sure if that's a good idea. Maybe we want to know that there were good first bugs that got fixed. So we shouldn't do that. We should look at the good first bugs query reopened, assigned, new, and unconfirmed, and then redo the search. Now we're looking at all the open bugs that have good first bug in the whiteboard. Again, the whiteboard is like the free tagging field. They can be of any resolution. And, oh, I'm also looking to see if mentor is in the whiteboard. Okay. 238 bugs. If you do this search, you may not have 238 bugs because you may not see the ones that are internal to Mozilla, like Mozilla Confidential, corporate bug, um, or like a security bug that maybe I can see and you can't. I don't think I'm going to reveal any horrible information right now here in this page um, because there are bugs marked for the public community to come in and fix. So. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I've just automatically sorted on ID just out of curiosity, and that's a very low bug number. So that's pretty old. Again, we can sort of decide where we want to start. I'd say starting with last changed might be useful. So is anyone looking at this along with me? You are. Is anyone else? Yeah. Yeah. I'm not, Do you? I'm not on your thing. <clears throat> if you click on search, I mean, one way we could do it is we can go to search. I the link you when you, <laughs> yeah, try advanced search. I think I have a little preference set so that when I say search, it takes me to advanced search and skips the the simple or guided search. Like simple search, oh, just search some stuff. I don't use instant search because it doesn't work as well. I don't use that. I don't think that even needs to be there. People can open a tab, for God's sake. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so anyway, advanced search, I recommend that. Um, I could be teaching a quick search, but let's, let's just do advanced search. Um, I'm not choosing a product or component. I am choosing a status. So I want all the statuses that mean open, the bug is open, unconfirmed, new, assigned, and reopened, and then here in the whiteboard thing, I'm going to type good first bug and also mentor and then see what we get. Uh, wait, I don't want all of the strings. What I want to do here, that would not get me the result I want. Good first bug. And I think down at the bottom, this is a little clunky, but, um, I could say I also want you to match the whiteboard tag. This always gets me. Where is the whiteboard tag? Whiteboard. It's not actually alphabetically at the bottom because someone cleverly put the little used tags at the bottom some or something, but that has the result of not making it so that you can't alpha use the alphabet as a useful key. So that, again, probably could um, whiteboard is, contains a mentor. Um, Go back up. Yeah. Um, so you're, uh, for, you're, you're in, the, in the resolution field, you've got dash, 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 and duplicates collected. Yeah. I think that means sort of anything. Why is duplicate also such a, I don't know. It defaults that way, and I've actually never known why, and I didn't question it, so I can. Oh, good. You will know. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because they don't have a resolution yet. Yes. They don't have any resolution. So is that because you could have resolved duplicate or closed duplicate or something else duplicate? Like yeah. duplicate is used um, for different for, for under statuses. Under the reopening, you can only have that as a, as a resolution because you, they're not resolved yet. Yeah. 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 yeah, I never questioned it. I'm like, that's the default and I'll figure it out later. So it's not very obvious. No, no. That would be a good like little known fact. Um, okay, so this is, by the way, we introduced ourselves around in the room earlier, but you weren't here, and this is yeah, Andre. Sorry, I sneaked in, I wasn't going to question. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm Andre, I'm uh, doing the same as Liz, but for the Wikimedia. Oh, you were the one who had this. Yeah, we looked at a bug um, from yeah. Firefox incoming, and, uh, or like fi bugs filed yesterday, and the first comment was from you. You were triaging it, and so I was like wondering if you were doing that during our talk yesterday, like you were triaging my bugs. <laughs> You're just that bug mastery. Okay, so if we search um, on those good first and mentored bugs, we should get around 200 bugs. Is it 238 for you? I'm just curious. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Ah. Hmm. That's exciting to see. Yeah. And I get a bunch of crash ones at the top. Oh, yeah? Hmm. You mean those red ones? Yeah. I wonder how you're sorting it. I'm sorting by whatever default is. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. I'm not sure what it's sorting by. <laughs> none, none of the columns are highlighted. Oh, that's interesting. Now I'm sorting by. I don't know. Why do you have red ones at the top? That's no. Well, anyway, um, those discrepancies just won't matter. I mean, you might someday be such a guru as to know the answers to these questions, but obviously, I've managed to continue triaging without knowing. So, embrace the um, uncertainty. <laughs> embrace the learning opportunity. I don't know, man. Um, so I was thinking if we sort it by the last changed, that might be one. Like you could pick this one. Just go ahead and like pick one and take a look at it. Or we could walk through it together. Um, this one is a core bug. And I'm just going to open that in a new tab. And again, keeping kind of what is our point? You know, we can read this bug and understand it. And we also we have to understand what the bug is, and then we want to understand what we're trying to accomplish. And um, someday the bug will open, and we'll be able to answer that question. What we're trying to accomplish is probably making sure that the things marked good first bug are not stale. So back in this thing where it says how to triage it, how to triage this category of stuff, we want to say, yeah, is the bug old and stale? Should it be closed? I wouldn't be too hasty to close because it could be controversial. And that's a good point to just pop up in the Bug Masters channel and go, I think maybe this should be closed. And just get a, like, a second opinion. I think that's part of why it's a nice group activity. Um, you might. So let's look. What do we think? Reported in 2011, so it's not that old. Um, it's reported by, I, I actually look at who reported it. And I know this is like someone who contributes quite a lot. And look, they have a Mozilla.com address. Does that show for you as well? Yep. So I feel a little bit like I trust this person probably knows that this is a bug, or it was a bug in 2011. Window opens with the wrong dimensions when primary and secondary are not top aligned. I don't actually know what that means. What does that mean? Does anyone have a clue? We can read on. Ah, product core widget Coco. It's a Mac OS X. Coincidentally, I'm on a Mac right now, so this is great. <coughs> it's, oh, this is interesting. It, it blocks something else. So we want it to 
to get fixed so that it doesn't block this, whatever this is. If it's blocking something that's important, maybe it shouldn't be something we're waiting for some one completely new. Oh, dual monitor. Oh, OK. Primary and secondary refers to the display. Here's our bug. Wait, I'm going to close that other one so I don't get confused. I do, yes. No. Desktop. Huh. Like awesome. What? Desktop. My desktop? Image. Yeah. I don't, I think it's, oh, ha, ha, ha. Yes, actually, it's kind of funny. OK, I'll confess. It's um, the Beastmaster poster. I hope it doesn't change to something. Yeah, it's from the movie The Beastmaster. So that's like, I'm, I'm like, yeah, I'm the bug master. I'm like, rawr, the bugs. And we're like, yeah. So I totally want a good, like, a, a Bugzilla sticker, that, like a bug mastering sticker. That's like, I, maybe not the lone hero with the phallic object and the woman, like, crouching at his feet. That would be not a good idea. No, so maybe different than this, but with the basic idea, it would be kind of cool, like, yeah. that you're, you know, an adventure hero. Yeah. yeah. Actually, I really, I have been sketching out my ideas for the, um, like, um, like, Lord of the Rings style fantasy, you know, map of Mozilla project, and, like, where the different which one looks like Mordor is kind of like, <laughs> I keep changing my mind. <laughs> but it could have like the Bugzilla River. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the Firefox demeans that overlap with core, you know, the core prairies. I don't know. So yeah, I'm sketching out silly metaphors because um, cause they're nerdy. Um, Window opens with the wrong dimensions. Okay, now I understand the bug a little bit better. Um, it's, it seemed really cryptic at first, and now I understand it's talking about when you have like two displays or monitors. Primary and secondary are not top aligned, so okay, something is not aligned along the top. Bug report. The patch is correctly created. Oh, it already doesn't make sense. What? Windows are sized for the lowest screen size. Um, so this is really specific. This is a very specific monitor layout. To reproduce it, you do these things. Those things, are they, do I think they're reasonably achievable? My other question is, who marked this good first bug? Like, not, you know, I'm just wondering. Oops. Does it say, it should say when someone added the tag, but I'm not seeing it. It must have been when it was created. So actually, the bug reporter who works for Mozilla reported it and is willing to mentor it and thinks it's a good first bug. So it's, 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 that all sounds very nice. If someone has an interest in making monitors line up correctly, an inherently virtuous and lovely thing, then this person is willing to mentor them. OK. I mean. So my judge, I don't know what you guys think. My, my feeling here is this is probably a fine good first bug and somebody's willing to mentor. I'm not sure about good first bug in the easiest thing to tackle that you could already tackle. Like good first bug if you already know what you're doing <laughs> in some way. Um, but to really decide that, I would have to go like halfway fix the bug. So I'm not going to go halfway fix the bug. I'm going to figure that he knows what he wants to mentor. and. I'm going to leave this one alone, probably. Um, I could optionally like need info, I could, we, or you could, could just say, I need more information from the bug reporter. Hey, is this still a good first bug? Like, do you really think this is a good first bug? But I, I, I actually feel inclined to not do that. It's not so old that it seems silly. Um, do I want? this person to go assess whether it's still a problem. So we could try to reproduce it. That's also an option. Um, what is your opinion? Anyone? What? Andre, you're looking. You're nodding. <laughs> oh, you agree? You would leave it? Yeah, some people feel that two weeks is too old. 
like untouched for the last two weeks, then they feel that that means it will never get touched again or it's very unlikely the probability of that bug ever happening for anyone is down. I think that probability is still enough to be significant. Like somebody may be like, I want a project on a Mac, you know, with Cocoa. I don't know. It doesn't seem ridiculous enough to close. Rate a crash test is another bug. Um, that was unspectacular. Like we didn't actually do anything. We could ask whether it's good or not. Writing a crash test, that sounds interesting. Allow styling day boxes. This is a calendar one. So this is the very hopeful calendar project which wants new people contributing. This isn't, this probably isn't that spectacular because I already triaged it, like the whole category, like <laughs> giant bug day. But another good way to approach this, actually better than time because there's nothing ridiculously old. So better than time might be maybe by component and say, oh hey, if I'm going to bug somebody, maybe I'll just do all the calendar bugs. Maybe I'll, I'll look at all the calendar good first bugs, talk to somebody on the calendar team and see what they might want to happen. Does that sound overly complicated? I don't know. We can look at another bug. We can pick another one. One reason some of these are hard to decide about is that we kind of have to try to duplicate the bug to know if it's still an issue. Remove any use of the site's framework. It's kind of old. Someone actually changed it in March. Um, in fact, what happened three months ago? Someone changed the parameters of the bug. So I'm afraid that like triaging this live would be like me staring at the bug with my mouth open for a while and then doing a bunch of searches to figure out what was going on. And I'm not sure I want to do that. <laughs> um, for this, somebody wants to mentor it and it's seen some recent activity, so I would leave it alone, you know. Um, I might CC myself on some of these bugs. So that's actually something that's kind of interesting to do. Like you can go, oh, I'm going to sort of adopt this bug and watch it. And I can just go, I'm going to add myself. Um, and um, then when it gets changed, I'll get the bug mail. And that can be pretty interesting. That can get overboard really quickly once you start watching a lot of bugs. So again, the filtering aspect is important. So when I did that change, it used to, up until like this week, um, the bug would then show you all the people it sent the email to <laughs> send bug mail to, and then it would show you an even huger list of people that it didn't send bug mail to, and I'm not sure why. I actually never understood that part. Um, but I think don't feel too worried about that. Like part of why we're now hiding it by default is that those people can handle their own bug mail and they make their own decisions about which kind of bug mail to get and how to filter it. So we're not going to worry if they 12 people just got emailed because I signed up to CC myself to the bug. Okay. Um, does anyone have anything they want to discuss or questions or anything? I feel like I've kind of demonstrated there is a lot to learn, you know, and here's a way to start learning it. I'm not sure we like spectacularly wrangled anything live on camera, but um, <laughs> hopefully you get a picture of what doing this is like. You end up going down a lot of sort of rabbit holes. It feels to me a lot like when you look something up and you end up in Wikipedia for three hours. Mm -hmm. um, 
um, <laughs> like learning ever deeper levels of thing that are pretty interesting. So um, one result sometimes, like a side benefit of triaging and researching all this stuff is I, I learn interesting new things or I find discrepancies or wiki pages that are really old and I end up changing them or fixing them or emailing people and telling them to fix them um, along with actually doing some activity on a bug. We could look at Firefox untriaged. That could be fun. Um, let's look at today's unconfirmed. No, we could look at Firefox untriaged. That sounds good. Firefox untriaged is like just a huge mixed bag. Or not. Hang on. <laughs> of one bug. No, no. Um, I think I was like limiting, I was experimenting with limiting stuff. Um, this is just limited to Mac bugs. So this is like my little keep an eye on it, easy task for me. Um, this is a nightly bug, so doing this one could be pretty interesting. Like I would need to download that version of nightly and confirm it. So here, because it's an unconfirmed bug, my goal is either to say, is this, can I confirm that this is a bug? Can I reproduce it? Or you know, not. Um, someone new to Bugzilla is reporting that when they are using this specific build, which we can go download, on Mac 10.8.3, which I'm probably on or near it anyway, then go to Wikipedia, Dutch Wikipedia, and Firefox freezes. Somebody triaged it. This guy from France, see him doing a lot of untriaged Firefox, um, says it works for him. WFM has works for me with the latest nightly on Windows 7. Did you try with a new profile? So he's like suggesting maybe you should go read the support forums because you're having a support problem. And this guy is like, no, actually it has the same issue. So I would say maybe it's actually a Mac issue. Same issue after today's nightly update. Attachment. Ah, JJ new to Bugzilla, is very persistent and he is answering the question, which is great. He's like engaged. Thank you, JJ. And he's made a little um, attachment which says call graph after freezing. I'm not sure what that means. Let's see. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> like, I mean, this, I, I would almost say we may have like just, this is like maybe a crash bug, but it would be nice to duplicate it. Um, it does say freezes, so maybe that's more of a hang and less of a freeze. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so not a crash, maybe. We could try to reproduce it. So Firefox Nightly 24, 527. So Nightly. I'm going to stop doing that. Why am I doing that? Ow. <coughs> Sorry, it's also sort of hard to do this with people like looking. I feel very self-conscious suddenly that I don't remember the right link to go to. Like, my nightly build right now is what version? Let's see. Oh, this is really useful. Actually, that's good. I just clicked that and it made, reminded me that this is an awesome tip for doing any sort of work in um, Firefox, whether it's triaging or bug fixing or what is you can run different profiles, you can run different versions of Firefox at the same time under different profiles. So there's a little thing called the profile manager. And I won't walk through how to do that, but if you search Firefox different versions or Firefox profile manager, then you will see how. And I think I also explain it in that bug mastering triage page. So starting nightly, and it's just lovely that I can run like four different versions of Firefox at once. So when I'm testing stuff in different versions, I don't have to like quit and restart with a different profile. Um, hooray, your Firefox is up to date. What version am I running? Let's look. 24.01a. Oh, well, it's even trying to update. I'm going to just test what that guy says the problem is, which is. Um, Wikipedia, he says just Wikipedia does it, but well, let's just try specifically. Like in this, I would kind of wish that he would have put that in the little URL thing or make it have HTTP on it so it would get URLified. 
Okay, so here I am in the nightly version, and let's see if it hangs. Uh, looks fine. Um, enter in the address bar. I think that was the address bar. Breezes Firefox spinning mouse wheel. Hmm. So this is. Um, that's a good question. I am on 10.83, and it's not crashing for me. So this is a work for, works for me. I could try clicking around. I could go to wikipedia.org. I'm wondering, like, this is like a JavaScript-y. He says he does not have any new profile. Started nightly with that. Huh. I don't think I have any add-ons here. Oh, I do. But having add-ons and it not crashing isn't the issue if I... So I don't want to like be mean or anything, but I'm not seeing it. <laughs> Just trying. So also, I don't actually know how to interpret his attachment. Um, does anyone know what a call graph is? I would be Googling, but I'm asking you. Just call stack. So this is like the stack trace call graph. Maybe this is like a cocoa. Th no, no, I don't know. OK, sorry. So this might give us something useful. Um, what? But I have 60 seconds. So, so I could keep fooling around in there. I could ask someone who knows more than me, which is probably the productive -er thing to do in this situation. Um, I, I could. Was it the same? Was the nightly version you got the same or newer? I believe it was the same version number, but it was a different day. So I could go get the build from that specific day from like May 27th um, I, and look at the, and, make, and test it there. Maybe it's something that already got fixed. You know, it was like a, I still kind of want to know if, if I could duplicate yeah. it so that I could tell the person, oh, I see it, just to validate them. And so that's probably what I would do on this. Um, right now, since I've actually done some work, I feel like it would actually be okay to comment and say, um, works for me with latest nightly um, and I could actually just close it there I could say well on the latest nightly it works now on a Mac and I think that's what I'll do I could go back and do the build from that point and see if I could duplicate it because I'm curious and I kind of want to know but I don't want to know that bad so it works for me with latest nightly on Mac um, 8.3, I should actually say, um, no, I shouldn't, it's fine. Um, uh, boldly, we're going to say, works for me. Looks like this got fixed <laughs> in the last, over the last few days. And so at least we have like triaged one bug. <laughs> um, so again, just commenting or adding some information I think is enough for me to feel that I've done something good and productive. I don't feel like I have to force some resolution or close things as a goal. That's all. Um, I hope that was entertaining and thanks for listening and participating. <laughs>